Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the product rule. Now before we start though, I'm going to take you back a step or two. Earlier you would have differentiated, I hope, functions like this, y equals 5x being multiplied by x squared minus 2. And to do this, I would like to have thought that you would have expanded the bracket. You'd have expanded it and got 5x cubed minus 10x. And then you'd have gone ahead and differentiated each term. dy by dx would have been 15x squared and for this one minus 10. Now as I say in this example what you've got is two functions of x being multiplied together. You've got the function 5x being multiplied by the function x squared minus 2. And we were able to expand that, get several terms, and then differentiate each term. But there are examples like this, say y equals x squared multiplied by sine x. We have two functions of x being multiplied together, the x squared and the sine x and yet we cannot expand this out any further. We can't go around saying that dy dx would be the differential of x squared times the differential of sine x. It wouldn't work. It's a bit like saying oh, dy dx would be the differential of 5x which would be 5 and the differential of x squared minus 2 which would be 2x. Now you can't go around saying dy dx is equal to 10x. As you can see, it wasn't 10x. So you cannot make that mistake. So I'll rub that out, okay? So there's got to be a way of differentiating functions like this where you've got a product of two functions of x that you cannot expand like this. So how do we do it? Well, this is the reason for having the product rule. Let me explain. So if we have functions like this then, y equals 5x squared times e to the 3x say, or y equals 4x times sine x, where we've got two functions of x being multiplied together like 5x squared times e to the 3x, or 4x being multiplied by the function sine x. What we do is we use this rule then, called the product rule. We have two functions being multiplied together of x, that's u and v we'll call them, y equals u times v. u would be say the 5x squared and v would be the e to the 3x in that example. Or in this example u would be the 4x and v would be the sine x. Now it can be shown that to differentiate functions like this dy by dx is equal to u times dv dx plus v times du dx. Now I'm not going to prove this particular formula for you. All I want you to be able to do is to be able to use it and recognize when to use it. All right so Let's get cracking. Let's do the first example. We're going to differentiate y equals 5x squared e to the 3x then. So let's put that up here. y equals 5x squared e to the 3x. So we've got our two functions being multiplied together. That's going to be my u and this one here is going to be my v. Now I'm not going to write that u is 5x squared and v is e to the 3x as I know some people do and encourage. No, I'm going to want you to try and remember this, okay? It shouldn't really be too much to remember. So we're going to get straight into dy by dx. So dy by dx is equal to u, which is the first part. So we've got the first part and I'd also encourage you to write things in brackets. Okay, I'll explain why later. Basically it's so that you don't write ambiguous statements. But put the u part in brackets, we've got 5x squared. Now we need to multiply it by the differential 
of the second function here, okay, in this case e to the 3x. We differentiate e to the 3x with respect to x. Now you should know that the differential of e to the ax, where a is a constant, in this case 3, the differential of e to the ax is always a e to the ax. So that would be 3 e to the 3x. All right. Now we have plus, and then we have v, which is the second function here e to the 3x in this case, write that down in brackets, e to the 3x, and we multiply it by du dx, the differential of the first function, which in this case is 5x squared. Differential of 5x squared is 10x. All I need to do now is just simplify the two terms. So for the first term, we've got 5 3 is a 15, then the x squared, and then e to the 3x. That tends to be the order that we write statements like that. Okay? The x term, then the exponential term. For the next term, we write the number first, so that's 10, then we write the x part, and then we write the exponential part, e to the 3x. 10x e to the 3x then. Now we could leave it like this, but quite often it's nice to see if you can factorize statements like this. So we can, in this particular example, there's a 5 that's a common factor. It goes into 10 and 15. We've got an x and we've got an e to the 3x, which are common factors. So we've got 5x e to the 3x. All I need is a bracket now, and inside the bracket we just need a 3x to make that into 15x squared e to the 3x. And for the second term, we just need a 2. And we close the bracket off. All right, so that gives us dy by dx then for 5x squared times e to the 3x. All right, let's just try this next example here. Number 2 then, uh, where we've got y equals 4x sine x. And in this example, what we're going to do then is take the u as the 4x and v as the sine x. So we can get straight into dy by dx then. dy dx equals u, that's that part, 4x, put it in brackets, multiplied by dv dx. So we need to differentiate with respect to x sine x. And you should know that the differential of sine x is cos x. So I put that in brackets. OK, then plus, and then we do v times du dx. So v is that part, sine x, put that in brackets, and multiply it now by the differential of u with respect to x. So that's differentiate 4x with respect to x, which is 4. Put that in brackets. OK, what we need to do now is just clean up each term. So for the first term, we've got 4x cos x, put that in, 4x cos x. And for this term, we've got 4 sin x. Alright, and by the way, just want to say, you know, earlier on I said, make sure you put all your differential bits in brackets, okay, because it could lead to ambiguous statements. And here's a classic case where you can get ambiguous statements. So often I see students writing multiplication signs in between things. Look, for instance, for this, I would quite often see students writing sine x times 4. Now this is misleading because is this the sign of 4x? Or is it 4 sine x? Well, by putting it in brackets, we stop this effect from happening. So that's why I'd encourage you to always put your differentials in brackets. So I'm going to get rid of that, OK? So we now have 4 sine x. So what I could do now is just factorize this, and if I do, I've got 4 as a common factor, and then I have got x cos x plus 
sin x. All right, and that brings me to the end now of using the product rule for differentiation.